Welcome to Hard Questions, where we tackle the tough issues right out of the Bible. I'm Don Black, your moderator, and our panel today are Dr. William Glaze from Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh, Amen. Pennsylvania, Pastor Pete Giacalone from Rainbow Temple in McKeesport, Pennsylvania, Dr. Ray Heipel from Providence PCA in Robinson Township, mm -hmm. and Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert from Kingdom Restoration Christian Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Amen. Gentlemen, here we are. Here we are. Ready for the questions. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we've got some doozies for you. I mean, yes. you're tuned into the right program. If you've ever asked or wondered what, what, I, what would a pastor say if I asked them this question, <laughs> this is the program that you want to be tuned into. Let's go to our, ver let's go to our very first question, mm -hmm. and it says this. What do I say to my teenage, now get this, mm -hmm. when they tell me that they're going to explore other religions? I think it's great. I, you know, I think we learn by asking questions. Now, I would tell the parent, stay involved. Just don't let him go off on his own, but explore together. There's, we learn by asking questions. And so, you know, sometimes we as solid Christians, we think, oh, no, we're going to lose them. No, let them, let them see what's out there. Uh, so I, I think we can learn by asking well, questions. And, and I would do what, what Pete is, is Stay recommended. In the corner. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I think there would be a prerequisite for me. Okay. I would make sure that they knew what Christianity was right. all about. Comparative. Yeah, right, exactly. Com I mean, I, you know, because solid. then, and, and get them to, to know the truth, get them to be able to uh, mm -hmm. support the truth. Right. I mean, you know, to me, I mean, if you look at all the religions in the world, just think out of all of them. Christianity makes the most sense. Right. I mean, because, you know, all the other religions, you got to do, 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 you got to work. How do, how, how do you know when you've done enough? to get in. Christianity says you don't have to do anything. It's already been done. So, I mean, I would really solidify them in the Christian faith, and then I would do like you said, I would go out with them and begin to explore and look at other things. And there's great charts out there that, uh, from every religion. There's great charts out there, uh, the stand on Christ, the stand on the Word. Right. Oh, my, I, I think this, this could be a, a betterment than a detriment. Mm -hmm. Guys. Uh, boy, you two guys are better than me. I, I couldn't get over <laughs> looking at that question, my teenage son. Mm -hmm. You know, I have three of them now. And I just tried to picture e any one of them saying that to me. And I mean, the, my first thought is that it would be devastating. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be personally devastating because, you know, I'm a pastor. They're growing up mm -hmm. in the church. And, hey, Dad, I'm going to check out some other religions. Sure. Um, wow. You know, I would hope that I could get to where you guys were saying. That's where I'd want to get to. But, boy, my first you know, my first response would be, you know, try to put it, maybe, maybe not flip out, go to the Lord in prayer and maybe come back to them and say, well, why are you saying that? I'd want to know why. Sure, right, is exactly, there something exactly. in the Bible? Is there mm -hmm. something in the faith mm -hmm. that you're troubled with? Or did you hear something about some other religion? Right. And I'd want to go, you know, at it like that. But uh, it'd be hard for me to get there. There's a fabulous book out called Curious Cults. Uh, I mean, it's got to be 25 years old, mm -hmm. but but it's for those who are just curious. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, I, I agree with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I, 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 guess, I guess in the long run, I look at things and I say that, you know, sometimes you just can't shut people down, mm -hmm. you know? And, and right. it's almost like, you know, my wife and I, we used to joke when our kids were growing up, you know, we would tell them what we didn't want them to do. Yeah. And then, because <laughs> if you told them what you want them, then they yeah. do the, the opposite. Yeah, so, right. you yeah. know, but I, I, agree, I, I yeah. agree with you 100%. And, and what you're saying is right. You don't want to shut them down at that point. I just know my reaction. I'd have to like be checking my feelings and help God, please help me to give this the, you know, the right response because my initial response would not be good. And I think for me, um, I look back at Joshua. He said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Mm. And when I grew up, Going to church wasn't a democracy. You didn't vote on it. Uh, no, it, it wasn't one of those things. And all three of us love God to this day. Right, right. I think if it's modeled in the home, of course, I'd want to know why. I think that's a great right. point. Mm -hmm. Because if there are some things that they're struggling with or mm -hmm. looking for, can I give them answers in the scripture? But at the end of the day, it's kind of like my kids say, well, they want to explore Satanism. They want to explore marijuana. They want to explore yeah. this. Well, listen, that's why I'm your parent. You know, so then I can bring you in and say, hey, this is the direction that we need to move in. And we can talk about it, but at the same token, exploration on a short leash. You know, we say that in our church yeah. day, Sunday school for your kids, that's not an option. They don't get a vote that's on right. that. You're that's going right. to Sunday school, you're going to church. I can't control what you believe, I can't change your yeah. heart, but I'm gonna put you the place where God cared. They call, <laughs> that a, they call that a drug problem. Drug to church, drug to... <laughs> <laughs> Sunday school, drug. Well, teenagers. 
Now, especially teenage boys. Yeah. Teenage boys' brains aren't formed properly yet. They're not fully functioning yet. It takes a man to get into his 20s before the brain is actually functioning properly. That's <laughs> what happens. I'm not sure it might be. I got concussions I had. Well, that head-to-head -head football, brother, I'm still thinking it's that. But, 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 but medically speaking, a teenage boy's that? brain isn't fully developed okay. cognitively. He cannot make cognitive decisions in the way a, a, a teenage girl would, for instance. So I take that into consideration. We still have a teenager at home, too. And, and I say it all the time. And he's not watching it, so he doesn't, he's not going to be connected to this. But, <laughs> but his brain's not right yet. Yeah. So I'm not going to treat him like he's a full-functioning, listen, adult-to-adult -adult kind of conversation. I don't mean that in any condescending no, way. No, no, no. But I'm going to remember that he hasn't, he's not thinking right yet. Right. Mm -hmm. So because he's not thinking right, i got to do some thinking for him. You know, I got to do some thinking for him, and I got to put in his head the truth. If I put it, I, not in like, yeah, blah, blah, right, blah, right, blah, right. blah, but in like reasonable mm -hmm. truth mm -hmm. so that he can get, start processing. Now, that's, that's pursuing other religions in, intellectually. That's where you guys are at. Right. And I'm not against that at all. But what if they come to you and say, you know, hey, Dad, I don't think there's a God. Yeah. Mm. You know, Donna, I actually did not struggle personally as much with this one, as crazy as that is. Um, and because I, you know, I sort of deal with this all the time in, in, in sermons and in preparing studies and so forth. How can I show someone, you know, that God is, that God exists? And I, and I always begin in Romans 1, you know, for although they knew God, they did not acknowledge Him as God. Uh, they knew God because He has made Himself manifest to them and in them, for the creation itself speaks of the things of God and so forth as eternal power and divine nature. So my first response would be, you know there's a God, son. You just don't like Him. And then we would go from there. Right. And I, but letting them ask us. Yes. Again, we yeah. learn by questions. Mm -hmm. We learn by questions. Yeah. And it, 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 well, you know, I was going to say sometimes, too, when you, when you get into that conversation, you, you can't go to the Bible. I mean, because a lot of times when people are in, are in that mode, right. you know, they, 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 they've kind of canned all of it, God, right. the Bible, and everything. Yeah, that's right. So, that's you know, right. you, you've got to go to, you know, other arguments to, yes. to, you know, to talk about God. You know, one is the, the cosmological argument that everything has a creator. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you, you go outside right. of the Bible, right. you know, because that makes more sense to somebody yeah. that's struggling. Than, than to say, oh, I knew you were going to open up the Bible anyways. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, the sad thing is this, is very, this question is a very good question. And the reason why is in my particular denomination I'm part of, we're losing 85 to 90 percent of our youth who go off to college, secular colleges. Mm -hmm. And that's given from, from our hierarchy of our denomination right. because they're going off and learning. So, so we're either failing in our discipleship or we're failing and really bringing back home. Because I remember when, son I'm with you guys. When I got saved, man, you were in Sunday school. Then you were in church and then you were there Sunday night and you were there Wednesday night. And I think you have to go back to the home. Anytime yes, yes. that I see this, if somebody, if my teen is getting to the point where he doesn't believe in God, one of the things I would check with every parent is ask, how well was it modeled in right. the home? Mm -hmm. Not even just mm -hmm. taught. Mm -hmm. Was it modeled? The thing that kept me in my teenage years is that I had experiences That's with right. God. Right. It's not just a Bible lesson that's going to mm -hmm. keep our kids. They must have an experience, not even just in church, that's but right. if they can, in our homes, experience the presence of God. And therefore, a man with an experience is never at mercy to a man with an argument. Ooh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. That is so good. Well, if, if Pete, that's a, if that's a uh, statistic that's yes, accurate, yes. that scares me. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's a Pentecostal that's, denomination. That's, that scares yeah. me that we're, we're seeing that many of our young people turn now, I'm comforted with the scripture that says when you raise up a child in the way he should go and when he's old, he won't depart from it. It's that gap. That, <laughs> you know, it's yes, that gap. Yes. That we're returning. Yeah. Where life gets a lot of scars mm -hmm. and a lot of decisions are made that could be uh, lifelong problems in that gap. Right. How, do you, how do you address that, Pastor? Well, you know, you, we, we mentioned something on a previous program mm -hmm. about prayer. Mm -hmm. And I, I, what, I, what I've seen is the lost art of spiritual warfare, mm. that, that mm -hmm. parents are not going to war for the souls of their children. Mm. You, know, they're, they're, you know, Satan is, yeah. is out there and, and, yeah. and his demons yeah, and, right. and they're having uh, a field day. And, and, and here yet and still, you know, we want to, you know, reason and argue and debate with our children. And I mean, and, and I, I agree with all that, but you know, we got to go 
to intercession. And, I mean, we got to do spiritual warfare for their souls. Because, Prayer and fasting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like with Abraham and Lot, um, that same That's situation. Right. Yeah. You know, he interceded and God brought Lot out for Abraham's sake. Mm -hmm. And I tell parents all the time, if you have a son or daughter in their own Sodom and Gomorrah, get on your knees, begin to intercede yeah. and pray. And God held up the destruction until one of That's that was right. close right. to Abraham yeah. right. was important to him was brought out of that situation. Right. So he, the yeah. angel said, we can't do a thing until you're out of here. That's right. Wow. Because of Abraham. Yes. Mm. Wow. So what's, what, what's the practical step there? Give me a, give me a practical. To me, the practical is, uh, and we did this uh, when the kids sometimes would leave the house. We went in and prayed in their room. Sometimes mm. we, seriously, we would actually pray that, that uh, the spirits of confusion, because again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities of powers. Mm. So their room was a prayer room for us. You know, can I give you a, something happened in my life? I was out in the clubs. I was raised in the church my whole life, mm -hmm. and I was out clubbing and acting crazy. My dad came to me one day. And to some parent out there, they need to know, speak into your kid's life. Mm -hmm. He came to me and he said, why are you acting this way? And I said, Dad, I'm just out here having fun. Mm -hmm. He looked me in the eye, pointed his finger and said, one day you're not going to be able to do that anymore. Walked away. I was in the club and the Holy Spirit came and visited me in that club mm -hmm. and brought me out. And I gave my heart to God and been running with God ever since because of the words that spoke my father spoke speak. over yeah. my life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so the takeaway from this is... Speak into your children oh. and grandchildren's lives oh, yeah. in their presence and outside of their presence. Mm. Get in the trenches of the spiritual warfare and, and fight and wrestle for that life. Their souls may be secure oh, yeah. in Jesus, but that life that they may be God's, walk down God's path. That's a great, great mm -hmm. sequence of questions. We've got another one coming. We're going to jump around in this program, so don't go away. I know, I don't know the next question is going to touch you. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hard Questions. This is where pastors get together and tackle these tough questions. We're tell you, we're, we're, we've been talking about kids and how to bring them into a, a better understanding of their faith. You know, pastor, we well, can shift gears a little bit. I've heard that pastors say that um, this is a question that you can be blotted out of the book of life. I mean, that's an interesting comment to make. First, what is the book of life? And then second, what, what does that mean to be blotted out of it? Who wants to take, what's, what's the book of life? Well, the book of life, you know, when we look at uh, Revelation, mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's the name of all those who have uh, accepted Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because I think, you know, it's also called the Lamb's Book of Life. Mm -hmm. You know, all those that have accepted Jesus Christ as their mm -hmm. personal Lord and Savior. That whenever, uh, you know, when, when your name gets written, you know, uh, before the foundation of the earth or whenever, when you accept Christ, you know, that, that old yeah. debate. Yeah. But your name, when you, you know, by, by nature of the fact that you are a child of God, that your name is in the book of life. Anybody have any differences on that? That there's a volume that contains all the names of everyone who's come into, into the family of God. Kind of like the family book. Amen. Is that good? Amen. So can your name be blotted out? Pastors, I guess, apparently preach that. That question came from a, a viewer who said they've heard a pastor preach about getting blotted out. Is that a, is that a possibility? So we're saying once saved, always saved. Well, I guess that's the question. Is it a permanent? Oh, here we go. <laughs> is, 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 is it written in, per, in permanent ink? Here we go. Or, or, is, it, or is it on that magic disappearing ink? <laughs> Let's dance with that for just a second. I mean, if, if that's what they want to know, cannot mm -hmm. be blotted out. You know, I think if we're talking about, again, the plan of God, mm -hmm. God who is unchanging, who is all-knowing, even aside from predestination, does God know all things? Does He know who's going to be in heaven and who's going to be in hell from all eternity? Is that book a reflection of God's knowledge, or is it something else? Is it like, you know, your church membership role? Can you be blotted off of that? Well, sure. I think when you see the first place you see this image appears in Exodus 32, where Moses says to God, you know, because the people just had the golden calf and God and Moses is pleading for the people. And he says, Lord, forgive their sin or if not blot me from your book, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's the first place you see that yes. image. Yes. And, you know, can, can I lose my status uh, in, in the visible church? Well, absolutely. Uh, and in my opinion, either you were never saved and you're just showing your true colors or um, you're backsliding and you will eventually come back. 
but God's plan can't change. Let, let's, let's go to the scriptures so that we, we can help our, our folks up. In Revelation chapter 19, it starts with verse 12. <clears throat> and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books, so we know there's books. Books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works. And then if we drop down to verse 15, anyone not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. Okay. So, so, so we know that there is going to be a book. We know there's going to be the names written there. And if your name is not found in the book of life, the result is verse 15. Anyone not found written in the book of life was, was cast into but the lake. But it doesn't say they were blotted out. Well, That's the question. See, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Now, can I throw, let me throw okay. this caveat in there. Okay. Because you know, I'm going to go back and I, I agree with what you're saying. Uh, to me, there's, there, there's two concepts that's being promoted here. And I'm not going to argue, because we've been around this yeah. road before about uh, <laughs> eternal security. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not going down that road right now. Uh, but, you know, I think there's two concepts that's being presented. One is the book of life, the Lamb's book of life, where names are written. And then the other is the book of the living. And going back to that Old Testament mm -hmm. concept, you know, a lot of times, you know, there was a registry in, in Israel. Mm -hmm. And when somebody died, their name was erased from the book of the living because they were no longer here on this earth. Mm -hmm. And so I think what happens uh, sometimes is we mesh the two concepts together and try to make one. And I think it's kind of dangerous when, when, we, when we do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then again, one more spot. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 5 says, He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot his name from the book of life. And that's probably where that, where that question comes out of is the potential that there's a blotting cap capability. Let's suffice this question by saying that God knows who we are and he understands who his children mm -hmm. is and he keeps record of there's a family tree and he loves us enough to keep track of us and to stay in relationship with us. I don't really worry about getting blotted out. Mm -hmm. I'd, I, I, what I want to be is well done, my good and faithful there servant. You, there you, you know, go. that's what I, my name's in, it's in, it's going to be in. Now the question is, and is your name in? If your name's not in the book of life, right. brother and sister, that, well, you're not brother and sister yet. If all you have to do is ask Jesus to be your savior. I mean, that, it, he simply provided salvation and pastors, we would, we would not do our best unless we said to the person that's watching right now, it's as simple as accepting Jesus mm -hmm. as, as I'm a sinner. Jesus, you died for me. I receive you. I confess my sins. Please forgive me and come into my heart. That simple kind of prayer brings you into a relationship. And guess what? Then when you pray that with your heart, and I pray with your mouth, you pray it with your heart, God writes your name in the book. Amen. When your name's in the book, then let's leave him take care of his books. This God keeps the books. He doesn't, and he doesn't cook the books. Right. <laughs> and, and, and the books are there. Yes, Pastor. Well, in Psalms, David, in one of his prayers says about the wicked, says, let them be blotted out of the book of living and not be written with the righteous. Well, there's, there's Pastor's point right there. The book of living versus the book of life. Can, can I say this? Because sure. our, our good friend, uh, uh, Pastor Chris Gibbs, is not here. Yes, he is. And, 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 so, and so we've had this conversation <laughs> before, and, I, and, and Chris and I disagree. But one of the things I like that he says he says that, you know, we look at, you know, and put the emphasis on, you know, getting out. We should be looking at how we can live right and stay in. Get in. Yeah. Get in. Get in. Because, listen, it's not just yeah. about eternity. It's about right now. Right. right now is and where. Then, and then again, what's, what's happening in these people's when they ask this question, they're fearful that if they think a wrong thought, do a wrong action, yeah, the, God's, God's there with, can't wait to. No, 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 no. He's no. got the eraser ready. Yeah. 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 He's yeah. more yeah. for you than what you ever and realize. And you're stuck with the position of, well, what do I have to do to get back in? Because I've right. already, I already believe in Christ, and then you're yeah. looking to your work. Yeah. So uh, whatever you do, you're, yeah. you're going and down the shift, wrong road. Let's shift gears. Okay. There, there, this, is, this is a question that was, was asked about profanity. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible say? about profanity. You know, many times in Christian circles, mm -hmm. we've got quite a mm -hmm. constri uh, constricted co uh, vocabulary. You know, right. some of the colorful, <laughs> what might be called blue words are yeah. out of the vocabulary. Yeah. Is that a godly thing or is that a culture I, thing? I don't believe so at all that uh, it's correct. Um, I, I hear many uh, Christians constantly, I'll be talking to them and I'll hear this expletive and that expletive, and I'll be kind of like, are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, and I, people, I think a lot of times people are misinformed about scripture. 
If you yeah. read in Ephesians chapter 4, verse one of the places, verse 29, right. yeah. but even before then, he talks about the old man and the new man, how we're to take off the old man, right. put on the new man. He said, let him that labored with his hands, or stole with his hands, now labor with his hands and do good unto others. And then he says, let no, in the Amplified, it says, let no, no. foul or polluting Evil. speech yes. ever come yes. forth out of your mouth. Right. And yet and still, because sometimes, I, I'm just going to be honest with you, I think sometimes people are afraid, well, if I correct them, they may leave the church, they may stop tithing. Mm -hmm. But the reality is the scripture is still the scripture. Yeah. And as believers, we should speak life, and yeah. the power of life and death is yeah. in our tongues, and so yeah. our speech should be wholesome. Can I, can I share this? Uh, before I got saved, and my wife will give a testimony of this, every other word out mm. of my mouth was taking the Lord's name in vain, mm. you know, damning God and, mm. you know, all the, I mean, it was, it was terrible. Mm. And when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, the first thing that he came up, came in and cleaned yeah. up was my tongue. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, nobody had to tell me scripture or anything else. The Holy Spirit just began to minister in my heart and, and God cleaned up my tongue. And so even, you know, what the Bible says that is wrong, but if we have the Holy Spirit living in us and we're yielding to the Holy Spirit, that the spirit is going to make us uncomfortable, you know, saying stuff like that. And I think that if, when people continue, like you said, when they continue, you know, uh, Paul talked about having your conscience seared. Mm. And I think that people, you know, they, they become numb to the fact that this is wrong mm. and the Holy Spirit is speaking to them, but they, they don't hear the Holy Spirit. You know, again. I think it's a sign of the corruption of another, just a sign of the corruption of our age, the, yeah. the decline of America's Amen. morality. Amen. Uh -huh. I mean, to hear the way even adults talk and the way people, even men will talk and say things in, you know, in front of women, in front of children now. Oh my gosh. I've never seen a case where, you know, Jay, you were saying like, you'll hear people talk like this. In, in my church, you know, occasionally I'll hear somebody, you know, visitor or somebody in the line. Whenever I hear colorful language, you know, whenever I hear uh, yeah. obscene language, cursing, mm -hmm. if, if, when I get to know that person, there's always something in their life. There's always something Amen. wrong there. It's always Amen. an indication Amen. of it. And, uh, you know, you, I remember when I was a kid, I wasn't a believer, and, you know, we got into junior high, and, you know, we'd start cussing. Well, why'd we start cussing? Because we wanted to, to be cool and look like we were mean and tough, and, mm -hmm. and it, was just a, it was just a fearful thing, and it was just wrong. It was a lie, and you, know, you think about that. And I remember as a kid, I never heard my dad swear. I mean, he wasn't a, a born-again Christian. I remember, my brother and I both remembered the first time we heard dad curse. He was playing poker with a bunch of guys at sports <laughs> club. I was like 16 years old. He didn't know I was behind him watching him play cards, and he cursed. And my brother and I talked about that years later because it's the only time we ever heard my dad curse. Well, I, I, the scripture comes to mind, out of the abundance of the heart, Amen. the mouth speaks. Amen. So some of us just need to get the vacuum out right. and start cleaning up the heart and get our mouth right because it's a mouth, confession is made unto righteousness. Mm -hmm. A tongue is such a powerful tool, we need to get our mouth right, our tongue right. You think, that's oh, just simple, it's easy, it's just, it's not a big deal, it's just the way I talk. No, it's not, it's the way you think, it's the way you reflect. Come back, we're gonna, do, we're gonna be back with, with a, a hard question that we're all avoiding, so we'll be, we'll be right back, <laughs> you don't wanna miss it. <laughs> We like to end every program with a scripture, but before we do that, uh, I had a question that was phoned and that we, we were saving. Unfortunately, we don't have time to get to that, so you want to tune in next uh, week because this is a doozy question. It's going to take more than a minute for us, mm -hmm. but let's do a wrapping round. What do you say to that son who says that he's questioning his faith? I would say, son, I love you. I want the best for you. And as your father, I'm going to walk with you through this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I could say it any better than that. That's, I, I'd want to get to that point, but it would be hard for me to do that. Okay. I would say, okay, would, let me go with you, like, like Doc said, but let's compare everything to the Word. See how everything compares to the Word of God. With a heart and with love and a smile on my face, I'm going to look back at him and say, hey, one day you're not going to be able to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we're so glad you joined us for Hard Questions today. Today, we invite you to send your questions to hardquestions.org. We love you. We're glad you're watching. God bless you.